Talking with me in a moment is the founder of a London theatre school whose list of alumni reads like a who's who of British actors. Since starting a lunchtime improvisation club in 1968, she's inspired generations of child actors, from Pauline Quirk and Linda Robson to Cathy Burke and much of the cast of EastEnders. Yet after falling ill a decade ago, she found herself at the centre of a real-life drama when her teaching colleagues refused to allow her back into the school that bore her name and she was forced to establish a new theatre school. Does she feel anger and bitterness at that betrayal or does she still believe in her youthful credo that the smile is stronger than the scowl? I'll be talking with her about this and other matters in confidence. <laughs> Anna, I, you never stop, do you, really? And just tell me what you'll be doing tomorrow, where, uh, about how many people you'll be seeing, and what have you worked out what you're going to be doing? you know what you're going to be uh, doing yes, tomorrow? Yes, I do, yes. I'm um, taking a secondary class, 11 to 15, tomorrow. How many people will, will you have in the class? Uh, there will be about 20. Yeah. Um, I had much bigger classes, but since I left the, the, the building, um, we're building up the numbers again. Mm. And when you say building up the numbers, I mean, how many other are these are people who've been accepted to yes. the school now? Yes. And you've got waiting lists as well, have you? Uh, I did have, um, because there was a sort of turning point uh, a, a few years ago when uh, I, I left the building in Barnsby Road. Yes, sir. Oh. And um, uh, I, I now have a, a little church hall. And the adult class is very full, but the secondary class uh, isn't quite so full. You have an adult class? Yes, now. I do. I love taking the adults. But that's new, isn't it? No, no. Um, I always associated you in the past with children. Oh, and, uh, right. young... When I first started in 1968, I had children, and then they came back at 11 to go on to their secondary classes, and then they came back again for their adult classes um, as they grew up. They didn't leave. So I, I've virtually always had adults. But aren't they more starstruck now? I can't help thinking with, you know, with programmes like X Factor on the television and young children watching this must think, oh, I think I'll be a star. And they're more... They, they have the idea in their heads they can quickly become famous. Uh, I think that was so then and now. But uh, I'm very quick to spot a star struck teenager <laughs> and I say you need to come you know to be trained because I'm a great believer in training our motto is talent thrives through training together and um, they love at the moment they love Adam Deacon who's one of our boys and um, they sort of say did you really teach Adam Deacon you know and, the, and uh, but if, if they want to be a star, they'll get a rude awakening on that. What do you do? What do you say to them, Anna? Well, just, you know, c come here for the sake of the class, and then if, if something like that happens, all well and good, but you, you need to walk before you run. And you also, I know, and this reminds me of... Um, because I, when I was... Years and years ago, I spent some time with Joan Littlewood, and, and, and the idea of saying to them, look, acting is not some wonderful, magical, star-studded thing. It's, it, it's hard work. That's something that you tell them, I think. Yes. Just in Joan's words, that would be exactly what I would tell them. It's hard work. You've got to work at it. Um, but it can be great fun, and enjoyment is the key. I, when I go through, and uh, it's difficult, there are so many names. You, you can add to these names. I think of Phil Daniels, Gillian Tailforth, Linda Robson, Pauline Quirk, Cathy Burt, Martin Gary Kemps, uh, Susan Tully, Natalie Cassidy. How many have I missed well out? Well done. How Sid many have I missed Sid out? Sid Owen, Patsy Palmer. Yes. Um, <laughs> All of these, I mean, I mean, and you keep you, you you maintain your friendship with most of these, or perhaps all of these. Uh, yes, I, I I do like to remember their birthdays and at Christmas and so on, and um, you know, it, it's lovely to maintain the link. Is there, is there a thing because 
working where you do, I mean, most of the backgrounds of the people that we've been mentioning are not really the normal backgrounds for many actors. They're much more, not necessarily working class, perhaps lower middle class, but whatever, but they're not really... I mean, there's the idea that a lot of actors come from rather relatively privileged backgrounds. But yes. Is, is there something in you which believes that perhaps this class are underrepresented among actors. You want to do something to change that? Is there a, is no, there a was, missionary it was, element? It was quite by chance, Laurie. I mean, uh, I came to Islington in January 1968, and they seemed to be quite tough. Uh, and um, I remember one of the sayings in the playground was, I'll smash your face in, or, uh, you know, I'll smash your head in. And I thought, right, I'll be back to Hampstead in no time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, over 30 years later, I was still there. Because, I am still there. But you must have got middle class people. Oh, yes. Come, but they must have it, it, thought, they're, oh, I could, this, I could, this is successful, I could get in here. I think you even had Ewan Blair, didn't you? You had one of the Blair. Yes, that's right. And in. Sophie Ward, Simon right. Ward's daughter. Uh, lots. Uh, and then, well, again, what I have is. I call it integration through improvisation. And that's integration in every way, class, c color, people of color, uh, creed, they're all mixed together, integration through improvisation. And I do that abroad as well. What do you think of other drama schools? The drama school I went to, or it was a long, long time ago, was almost a finishing school for middle-class girls, I have to say, an awful lot came from Surrey. I mean, I came down from Liverpool and I was amazed seeing all these well-mannered, uh, polished uh, people around. I felt quite out of sorts altogether. But what do you think of other drama schools? I mean, do you feel that you know how to teach people to act in a way that perhaps drama schools don't? Oh, I wouldn't presume to say that uh, at all. My, my way was is just different. Improvisation is the staple. And um, we start them straight away on improvisation by giving a first line, why are you always late, for example. And it just, you know, go with the flow. And we're also strong on poetry. Po 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 there's a poem done every class. Um, but other drama schools, it's, it's, it's just a different brief. You're being very nice, but I mean, I know you're an associate, rather, I think, anyway. Yes. They've taken you on board, haven't they? They've... I was an associate, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but, but you must, you said, because you don't, I mean, do you teach elocution, for example? Uh, I, I, when I arrive to drama school, the first thing I have to do is to learn to get rid of my flat northern A's. I, I like them to keep where they come from. I, I like them to keep that accent. But um, I teach RP, received pronunciation, as a dialect. So let's say we were t answer <laughs> answering it. <laughs> no, no, I just, it sounds yes, nice. Um, let's say um, we were doing a telephone exercise and had to receive good news or bad news. Um, I would get them to do it in London a London accent, a West Country accent, and different ways of doing it. And then uh, we used to call it posh English. And that would be their way, the way in to uh, receive pronunciation. You mentioned about when you arrived and you hear people shouting, I'm going to smash your head in and, and yeah. all of that. But I would have thought that the problem that you must have had is is discipline with this? How do, how do you, how do you in a way keep 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 order? Have you got any special <laughs> techniques for keeping everybody quiet? Well, I had my football rattler, and I used to use that if the noise became too much. Uh, I now use a tambourine. Um, but to be fair, Laurie, what what I um, when the children first come, the very first thing they learn is to be a good audience. When I talk, they listen to me. When they talk, I listen to them. And that's the ground rule which is established from day one. You're strict. I am a martinet. <laughs> and, and you also, I mean, you tell them about smoking and about... Yes. 
drinking. Tell me what you say. I mean, is, is this an introductory speech for new people when they arrive, like well, a headmistress's speech? Uh, or? I do um, a, a little song called Several Silly Smokers Sound Seriously Sad. And we do it in sotto voce and crescendo it, and we sing it. And it, you know, and the, the smokers, this is in my adult group. They they um, sing heartily. Several silly smokers sound seriously sad. 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 So we do this as a kind of mantra. And, um, but with humour injected into it. <laughs> it stops from smoking, does it? <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't they, know. I don't know, but I often get, I mean, Shirley Ann, she says I've been, I haven't been smoking now for six weeks. Um, and then I don't like to ask after that. So that, and there's the drinking's got to be watched as well. You, yes. You, you tell them about one that. One bottle of beer, two bottle. Of beer. I have another song to do with that. How's that one go? One bottle of beer, two bottle of beer, three bottle of beer, four bottle of beer, five bottle of beer, six bottle of beer, seven bottle of bottle of beer, fish and chips and vinegar, 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 fish and chips and vinegar, pepper, 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 pepper pot, and it, it, you know, these are uh, I, I, for our voice warm up. Uh, I'm a great believer in five, five, a five-point plan. And um, for the five-point plan, for, for communication skills, it starts with posture and balance, projection, diction, listening with eye contact, and a friendly tone of voice. And um, that's, you know, people spend years on communication skills, but that, that's, that's something to hold on to, that five-point plan. You like your, you like your five-point plans and your <laughs> uh, rather onomatopoeic, your or lots of, I mean, you, have, you have five Ps or five T or whatever, I can't remember what, what, the, what they all are, and then you have little ways, of, if there's a quarrel, you even have ways of making up little quarrels, don't you? you have a little, uh, uh, I think it's, it's something called the olive branch idea? Or That's you, right. What do you do? Well, with the olive branch, um, the first line might be, I'm really sorry about yesterday. And, um, you know, and the other thing I do is roll reversal, putting the boot on the other foot. And I think, again, not in a heavy way, but that, that, that seems to be in a successful olive branch. So if someone's misbehaved, yes. the person who's misbehaved has to adopt the role of the one who's been injured or, or the one who's been hurt by the misbehaviour? Um, not quite as no. clearly as that. Um, we, I, I do it after an improvisation, showing them that you know if the improvisation has has got very contentious, uh, I do the olive branch after that. And you've got the other little the little thing the, about smiling, isn't it? What is it? That just that that's, that's one I heard you talk about once. But the smile is stronger it, than the scowl. Yes, that's right. Can I try it on you, Laurie? Do try it on me. Okay. Well, you've got. Let's say um, you've got to look into my eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take your hands down from your, from your face, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and I, I'm going to smile, and you're going to scowl, and I've got to try and change that scowl into a smile. Keep looking in my eyes. I see what you, you mean. You see what I mean? No, I, can, it is, I feel a bit stupid with that expression on my face when you're smiling. Because <laughs> I, I do want to reciprocate. Yes. Didn't work, though, somebody told me, with Van Morrison. That's right. Well, we were on the Gloria Honeyford show, and um, Van was sitting in the green room opposite me, and he looked very... I hate to say it because this music is wonderful, but he did look morose. So I tried the smile scowl test with him, but I'm afraid I failed miserably. He he wasn't having any of it. You just were smiling at him, and he <laughs> yes. was scowling back at you. He probably thought I was some sort of stalker. <laughs>